the Iowa caucus, the first contest of the presidential primary season, is just nine days away, and the stakes could not be higher, especially for people like Ron DeSantis. Well, for more reaction, let's bring in our great special guest today, Republican strategist and host of the 13-minute news hour, Bobby Everly. Uh, Bobby, you and I were just watching him. What I yes. thought was really interesting, uh, when we first got to it there, the first thing he did was take a swipe at President it Trump. It was, yeah. It seems like he's getting uh, the Biden playbook, if you will. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, but it, it was interesting to hear him really kind of going after President Trump more than I've heard before. He did, and it was a big swipe. It was a big swipe there, and, and he made a good point. You know, when we see the, the invasion that's going on at the border and we see what's happening, how did, he, how did Ron DeSantis describe this anchor baby policy as an incentive to come in? That's all Biden's doing is giving incentives and getting people to come in and crash the border. This is something that needs to be done. I, I wish, you know, it's funny, the DeSantis we're seeing now is the DeSantis we should have seen in the summer. Yeah, For those, he has some fight in he, him. He has yeah. some fight. And I mean, it's Nikki Haley has overtaken him nationally. They're neck and neck in Iowa right now. And, and so if, if he would have had this in the summer, we might have seen a whole, a whole different race right now because that's how a presidential candidate should be acting and reacting and, and stating his case and now we're seeing it, but I, I think it's a little too late. It's interesting, too, because it comes also after a very fire and brimstone speech by That's President right. oh Biden. Gosh. And he also talked about democracy, preserving democracy, right. uh, which was, a quote, a sort of a focus of Biden's speech, albeit uh, we can talk about the court cases later that right. are coming. But it was an interesting moment that he's talking about what the values of this country and what this country stands right. for. Right. How did you take that? That was pure sort of, you know, let's preserve the republic. Exactly. Well, you, all you have to do is, is study, like, Marxism in, in their playbook. And it's classic what Biden did. He, he asked this general question, is democracy still America's sacred cause? And yet, who is taking away free speech rights? Who is doing anti-Semitism, you know, the rhetoric? Who is attacking our, as far as censorship? It's the left. And yet the left accuses the right of, of trying to destroy democracy. Anything you want to know that the left is doing, just listen to what they're accusing the Republicans of doing, and that's usually what's going on. But again, this is supposed to be the, the bring us together president and every opportunity he takes to slam and divide the country. And this was nothing different. In fact, it was one of the worst examples. Yeah, his speech was. And it was yes. interesting, as you can see, there were sort of some references to yes. that uh, with Ron DeSantis. Yes. We'll see where it's going to go. Thank exactly. you very much, Bobby. Sure we appreciate it. In Ankeny, Iowa, my hometown, and as I talk to my fellow citizens here and around this country, obviously the inflation issues, the economy, jobs, you know, the issues of the American worker and the American family are front and center. And so Joe Biden needs to get to work if he wants to even have a chance of reelection uh, on those issues instead of worrying about this nonsense and trying yeah. to drudge up, uh, you know, January 6th, hoping that that's the magic bullet for them to succeed. Yeah, it seems like uh, now the new strategy, like you said, is January 6th, January 6th, when most Americans are not talking uh, about January 6th. Uh -huh. uh, Matt Whitaker, thank you very much. And boy, is Iowa, where you are, going to be front row and center uh, very soon. And it still has been, obviously, uh, teeing up to that moment coming up. Thank, thank you, you Rita. very much, Matt. Always great to have you. And yes. let's bring in our great special guest, Republican strategist and host of the 13-Minute News Hour, Bobby Eber. Uh, Bob, really, we were just talking ending there, um, first to play off about the January 6th. It yes. seems that President Biden is looking at the polls and now saying, OK, well, it's not working on immigration. Bidenomics, people aren't right. buying that either. Um, so now it's going to be January 6th, January 6th, January 6th. Is that your read? That's my read. And the thing is, this is it, Matt brought up a good one about virtue signaling. And these guys virtue signal to this small fringe of the left. Anything they do that throws that they throw at Trump actually helps him. So I'm ready for the next Supreme Court case. You know, it's like, bring it on, bring on the next legal challenge, because Trump just rises in the polls. And then the only thing that Biden can do is go more negative. And I think that's contributing to his polling going down. It's not just the Bidenomics or the border. It's this way that tech that he has never been the unifier in chief. 
And, and so they're really scrambling. And when people scramble, when they get desperate, you see rhetoric like that. And, and it only helps Trump, and it helps the Republican cause in general. Yeah, I think it turns off a lot of American Absolutely. voters. And it doesn't pull anybody who's on the fence to say, oh, gosh, I want to vote for someone like that. No, exactly. Right, because Trump, in his way, you know, is, is getting people to focus on the issues, and Biden is doing the exact opposite, just trying to divide. Bobby, thank you very thank you. much. Stick with us for Absolutely. the rest of the day. We're glad to have you here very much. Claudine Gay steps down as Harvard's president, but she gets to keep her nearly $900,000 salary and is allowed to teach. And if that isn't enough, she actually went to the very liberal New York Times to quote unquote air her grievances, defending herself and playing the race card on her way out. In an op-ed, she writes, my hope is that by stepping down, I will deny demagogues the opportunity to further weaponize my presidency in their campaign to undermine the ideals animating Harvard since its founding. Excellence, openness, independence, and also truth. Well, I am joined by Shahar Azadi, former spokesperson for the Israeli consulate in New York. And also we continue with our great special guest, Republican consultant, Bobby Eberly, and also a great host too as well. Um, Shahar, let me start with you. The fact that in this op-ed, uh, she is taking swipes, saying she's the victim of racism. She even says that it was almost a setup on Capitol Hill, that it was sort of a plot against her. What is your reaction? I don't think asking about anti-Semitism on campus is a trick question, Sahar. Well, you know what, Rita? First of all, I got to tell you, there is a great word in Hebrew for this, and it's called chutzpah. It's unbelievable that you would have the, this former president of a once a prestigious U.S. university sitting, writing in the New York Times in a time when she wasn't even able to condemn the calls for genocide against Jews, where under her leadership, Israeli and Jewish students on campus were accosted by pro-terror mobs. Not only did she have to step down, she couldn't even acknowledge the unbelievable moral depravity of that reality at Harvard University. I think more than it's a, a question of anti-Semitism, it's a huge question for what's happening on the, in the U.S. for higher education. As you mentioned, Rita, she continues to teach. What exactly is she going to teach our children? I mean, that poses a severe risk for the future of our country. Yeah, that's a great point. And I also worry about those Jewish students. They never got an apology, uh, Bobby. You know, after all this, uh, they're still worried about their safety. We've heard them even in the last few days. Nothing's changed. That's right. I mean, and, and that's what you wanted. When they had the hearings, when Stefanik had the hearings and brought these presidents in, you wanted that clear repudiation of what was going on on college campuses, that Jews and anyone else can feel safe on campus. They didn't get that at all, and that's what sparked the outrage. And I'm glad it finally reached this point, because nowadays, you know, college campuses, they're just breeding grounds for leftist activity. I saw a study the other day, the average intelligence of a college student is average. They're, they're, we're not getting the best and brightest anymore. We're just taking anyone we can so that they can create left-wing activists, and we see how it manifested. After October 7th, we saw what happened on college campuses. It's terrible, and it needs to stop. Yeah, uh, average is a good definition. It might even be lower than that. <laughs> I think so, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Shahar, you know, speaking of these protests, even beyond the colleges, we have seen some really uh, incredible ones. I mean, they were blocking JFK, they were blocking uh, LAX, and they actually went to the World Trade Center. This, to me, I found really despicable. Uh, there it was at the entrance of where the World Trade Center once stood, and they're shouting, Allah Akbar. Those were the phrases that, of course, uh, the hijackers on 9-11 said. What was your thought? Uh, when you hear no. that, and the fact that they're allowed to be there, uh, right. albeit they didn't, I don't think, had a permit, so they probably weren't allowed to be there, and they should have thrown the book at them. Exactly. But, you know, Rita, you put the finger on it. I mean, this is not just a an anti-Israel mob. This is a pro terror mob. And the fact that they were there at the World Trade Center is a reminder that these 
hooded hoodlums are not just anti-Israel, they're anti the United States of America, they're tearing down American flags, they're against American values, they pose a threat to the very foundation of our society, and we should be very wary as to the future right here in the U.S. of those people who are marching out there, not only not denouncing decapitation of babies, but supporting a terrorist organization that perpetrated those atrocities. What more could they do and what kind of a risk are they uh, posing to our very security on the streets? I think the police, the FBI, Homeland Security, we should all pay very close attention to this, Rita. Yeah, Bobby, don't you think it's time to throw the book at some of these people? I mean, it's endangering lives, and it's also wreaking havoc for travelers. Absolutely, and and this is what, you know, one of my famous moments, or uh, favorite moments, is watching reels or YouTube clips where some of these people have had enough. You know, the truck driver that has to get the, the shipment done, or the, the mom that has to get the kids to schools, and, and someone's blocking the way, and they they finally had enough, they just move these people away, and, and get on with their business, but something needs to be done. You cannot stop people, especially we're talking in the United States, from pursuing happiness, pursu pursuing their job, pursuing an education. These people are just useless, blocking streets, getting in people's way, and something definitely has to be done, or they're gonna end up getting hurt because people have had enough. And you see people speaking out, protesting, and, and it's we, we need to take care of it right now. Yeah, people and for are what, fed right? up, fed up. Go and ahead, Charles, real quick. And for what? And for what? Exactly. For yes. what are they doing this? Yeah, for what? Uh, it, it is uh, crazy, and I do believe law enforcement needs to start clamping down a lot more. Uh, both Amen. of you guys, thank you very thank much, you. Bobby. Stay with us. Thank and you. now, as we are moving from there in Iowa, let's go to Ohio, and let's bring back in our great special guest today, Republican strategist Bobby Everly. Um, Bobby, you know, we were just hearing about... Um, of course, what's going on in Iowa, one of the issues right. is transgender surgeries, women's rights. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's on the ballot. Obviously, economy, border, there's a whole bunch of things. But I want to get to what Ohio Governor Mike yes. DeWine did. There's some big news out of yeah. there. Tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And this carries on a trend, like you said. Uh, I'm in, from Texas. In Texas, we just passed these. I this, saw it. Wait, where are the boots? The boots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. i got to work on the boots. I don't have the boots today. You, you called me All right, out. we'll forgive you. I know, right? We'll on, forgive you. On national TV. Uh -huh. No, but uh, so in Ohio, they were doing the same thing, right? This is a trend. We saw this explosion in these surgeries that are they're, they're child mutilation. They, they are child abuse. Texas acted, other states acted, Ohio acted with veto-proof majorities in the House and Senate to pass a bill banning these surgeries. And then Ohio governor, Republican governor, comes out and vetoes this measure, and it, it sent a shockwave ac across the country. And then we start to figure out, then you see the, the after effects. You know, you learn that He's received $40,000 from children's hospitals that support these types of procedures. And now all of a sudden he issues an executive order while also saying, you know, I agree with what the bill did, but th this is just going to do it better. He, he issues an executive order saying that we're going to ban this, but it has limitations. And the House and the Senate in Ohio are still planning to push forward with their, their overrides. Yeah, it's interesting what he's essentially doing now in yeah. this, like kind of trying to have it both ways, like you said, exactly. for politics. Right. It looks like he's allowing, um, maybe, or not denouncing it, if you will, in private hospitals, That's right. right? That's right. Uh, but in public, he is going to ban it. So it seems like he is playing a bit of politics he's, here. He's totally playing politics. Trying to appease both sides. Exactly. And you see, but you see the, the fallout in this is, a, a, it's also related to gay in Harvard, too, where you see what the outrage from grassroots can do. And, and that's a positive. That should be, that should give people some hope because we saw she's out now and we saw that he's backtracking and trying to have it both ways like you said. And, and that's the politics of it all. I hope in the next two or three weeks that the House and Senate in Ohio will still push their, their legislation because they crafted it, they worked on it a long time, they know it's good. And that would be an all-out ban. And that would be an all-out ban. And that's what we need. He's trying to have it both ways, play politics because of the outrage. But uh, just like with the steamrolling is there, you know, the snowball's going downhill just like it took out the Harvard president. I think he's going to see the effects in that, that 
those bills are going to pass. Yeah, because yeah. they, they do have the votes at least they to did. do it. Uh, Bobby. In this first wow. pass, yes. Really interesting yes. what's going on there and the politics behind it exactly. all, too. Thank you very much. And we sure have thing. loved having you here today. Thanks, so Rita. Thank you so really much for visiting. It. Next time, bring the boots, okay? Uh, yeah, I know. Okay. I know. I feel the pressure now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. It's great to have you here. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.